Hey y'all, welcome to this episode of Burns Misadventures. So in this one, we're working on my buddy Dave's computer. It's an all-in-one. And it is reporting an error saying no boot disk has been detected or the disk has failed. So, I've seen this happen on my own equipment before. And uh, what had happened is sometimes a Windows update will corrupt the boot sector on the hard drive and I'm hoping that's all this is so what I would like to do before we start tearing it apart and trying to find out if the hard drive is bad and all that fun stuff is I would like to try this little method now if it doesn't work and we have to go after the hard drive we will do that this seems like it's a new enough computer it should boot to flash now we just got to turn it, force it to turn off and turn on again. The power button seems to be under here. All right, and then we will turn it on again. Since it can't boot the hard drive, I'm thinking it will look for the flash drive to boot. We shouldn't have to mess with it. We'll see if that's the case. Blinking, there's a light on the flash drive and it is blinking now. Here we go. Uh, repair your computer. Boink. Troubleshoot. Command prompt type this part all right select this zero list volume oh wow so it would appear at this point that this hard drive is dead because the only volume showing is it's not showing a hard drive here this is my flash drive here so offhand I would say that the hard drive has checked out alrighty so I think I got the gist of how this thing comes apart <laughs> so the stand has to come off first Alright, this comes off. Then it's got these two screws down here. And they're kind of like... I don't think you even take them out. I think you just kind of... Uh, I don't want to take this out. Okay, and the back pops off. And in here, we find our dead hard drive. There is one screw. Right, right, right. We'll take that out of there. And slide them up. Take them out. This is a Toshiba one terabyte. I don't have a one terabyte. What I have is a 400 gigabyte. So what I have here is a Lenovo. It's a working computer. I don't really need it right now. And this has a 400 gig hard drive in it. So I guess we can sacrifice that for the cause. I should glad I put it on that swivel chair. That's making things so much easier. That I only have so much workspace. All right, so that screw and this screw. And this side pops off. Yep, yep, yep. So this has a three and a half inch hard drive as well. Pop the old set of power, set of data, or is it set of data, huh? So maybe I'll find an SSD put in here. It'll probably make somebody a pretty nice little desktop. 
maybe even yours truly. But anyway, here is the 400 gig hard drive. This is a Western Digital. And it is, it says it's 500 gigs. So we have a little bit of discrepancy. Back over here, so those come out. All right, so it goes in belly up, connectors over here. Always good to pay attention to that kind of thing. And that goes back on there. This gets set aside. If a computer wasn't using my chair, I could use it. I like to get everything started before I tighten anything down. Something my dad taught me back in the day. Hmm. Okay, let me get an eyeball on it. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm gonna lift it. I'm gonna lift it up a little. That means it. Okay. So there's that. There's that. And that. And that. Okay, so back onto the machine. Let's slide this guy back on here. It's a little yucky, not too too bad. So we can blow it out while we're in here. We'll put the screw back first. And connector. All right. That should be the fix now. I'll talk about this for a second, y'all. Yeah. You know what the difference between a generator and a motor is? It's uh, what's doing the turning. Electricity's turning it. Well, it's a, it's a motor. When something else is turning it, it becomes a generator. So you don't want to let these things spin because they generate electricity and you can fry other components in the computer because it's unregulated. These are anti-static brushes. I got them at Amazon. They weren't expensive. Good investment. If you're going to work on computers. Again, holding it. Not all that good. Wait. Fold this right back down where we got it. See if we can snap it all back together. I believe we've got her back together. Let's put the stand back on. Okay. So if we didn't break the screen, stand goes on like so. All right. All right. Yeah, I got you kind of a weird angle. Doing the best I can with the space I had to work in. Stand it up. <laughs> we don't want to forget to put this back. Push the button. Here we go. Tighten up. Ah. Okay. F2 for system diagnostics. Hard drive check. Nice. We'll do a quick check. Here we go, starting the check. Smart check path. Smart check path, short disk check. 
Okay, cool. Back to main menu. I guess. We'll do a memory test while we're at it. Uh oh, memory check failed. Memory module one dim zero. Glad well, we checked. Let's recheck it again. Memory test. Okay, so yeah, memory module one dim zero has failed. All right, so uh, we gotta take the computer apart. It'd be a lot faster if I just snap snap it apart this time. All right, well we're back inside. This one, this one. This one. What do we have here? So, there it is. Oh, okay, so it's 8 gigs of RAM. An 8 gig module. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to have an 8 gig memory module in a so dim package. Though I might have two fours in my, uh, what, what kind are we looking at here? PC4 2400T. Yeah, I don't have any of that laying around. So, all right. All right, so it's obvious we're going to have to get a memory module. Or it just needs to be reseated. So, you got to ask yourself at times like these, what would Adrian Black do? And he would get the deoxid out. So let's get the deoxid after it. See. I think the odds are against this working, but we'll give it a try. I'm gonna stick it back together. So all we're gonna be able to do for today, for right now. Put it back together, and hopefully, huh, they just needed to be reseated, which is possible. It was transported and everything. Stranger things have happened. We got the information we needed to order the parts, and we don't have the parts, so we'll just put it back together either way. So if this fixed it, we continue. If not, we're done for the day. Hey man, what's with all the noise? What's with all the noise? <laughs> oh, I gotta love these puppies. All right, back on the work. This one goes over here. I think that's all of those, so we can start tightening those up a little. Put these screws back on that I shouldn't have taken out. Really. That's alright, we won't take them out next time. Back there. Yep. Okay. Just 
wrapped it back together. Once again, now it's going to try to boot windows. Getting devices ready. And then you got to love the way windows just adapts to things. People give windows a lot of hate, but it does things no other operating system I've seen can do. My buddy Jimmy gave me this computer, that Lenovo, we stole the hard drive out of. So he had, I guess he reset it or whatever and just made a, a J <laughs> user. I felt no reason to fool with that. So let's see. System. There it is. Yeah, so it's showing 8 gigabytes of RAM. Alright, so I was able to download the drivers and all the and, and software and whatnot that would have come with the HP. Oh lord, look at that. Yeah, I'm thinking the memory's screwing up. Yeah, we might not be out of the woods yet. So, after about half a dozen uh, blue screens of death, I saw that it was a uh, NTFS.sys error. I googled that, and they said one of the causes could be a uh, corrupted hard drive. Well, we just replaced the hard drive. Uh, we will run an error check on it after we finish this. They said another cause that could be is a bad memory module. So. We had that memory act up on us, and after reseeding it, it seemed like it was going to be okay, but the blue screen of death kept coming up. So since we actually had an indication of a bad memory module at one point, we've already replaced the hard drive. We've also installed new drivers. Uh, things like the sound and the video, those drivers can be notorious for causing the blue screens of death, in my experience. So, I made the call and I said, let's just put a new stick of RAM in here. So, I ordered one on Amazon and they had it here this out that later that afternoon. Unfortunately, I had some other things to do and I couldn't get back to it until today, which is another afternoon. But, we shall get her done. So, we got to pop these screws out. I'll give it this. It's easier to work on than the iBook. Alright, I think that's everybody. We'll just give this a little lift, and off she comes. There's our troublesome, there's our little troublemaker right there. So I picked up this Crucial for eh, a little over 30 bucks, Amazon. A little dangerous. Ow, it's holding on to me. What about now? Oh, here we go. We got it now. I've already popped it up out of the latches. So, long side to the left, short side to the right. Right on. It should be in there. Now we can put it back together. Alright, so, update. I've installed updates that had previously failed before having put the memory stick in. This thing's been running for the better part of six hours without a single blue screen of death. Installing updates and all the fun stuff. So I have every reason to believe that this thing is fixed. So I've got it all updated, up to date. Now all, all Dave should have to do is basically turn it on and use it. So I think we're done here and I hope that what I've shown you here has taught somebody or helped somebody some in some way. I found this picture. My buddy Dave, he, he has a bunch, I don't know, he's got like 10 or 11 hives and he's the honey man. So I thought this would be appropriate for his wallpaper. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching y'all. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'd like to invite you to do so. And with that, we'll see y'all in the next one. Y'all take care.